Hello everyone and welcome back and after PCR we have the first part of gene expression which is transcription and if we begin by just reminding ourselves of the central dogma we know that DNA makes mRNA which in turn makes protein genotype is uh, determined by the sequence of bases in an organism's genetic code and the phenotype is an organism's physical and chemical state as determined by the expressed genes and the effect that the environment has upon them. So today we are looking at transcription. Transcription involves the production of mRNA or messenger RNA using a DNA strand as a template. Uh, let's have a look at the differences between DNA and RNA. DNA is double-stranded whereas RNA is single-stranded. The sugar in the nucleotides of DNA is deoxyribose sugar, but in RNA it's ribose sugar. And in DNA, thymine is present, but in RNA it's uracil instead of thymine. Now, if we have a quick look at the different types of RNA. Firstly, we have messenger RNA, uh, which is transcribed from DNA in the nucleus and carries the genetic code out of the nucleus to be translated into proteins. Next we have tRNA or transfer RNA which carries specific amino acids from the cytoplasm to the messenger RNA at the ribosomes uh, which are then incorporated into a growing polypeptide. And finally we have ribosomal RNA or rRNA which are the very important parts of the functioning ribosomes and the, this is responsible for the creation of the peptide bond between different amino acids in the growing polypeptide chain. Now, if we have a look at how DNA controls inherited characteristics of an organism, firstly, DNA is basically a sequence of different bases, and this sequence of bases, which are in the nucleotides of the DNA molecule, uh, this sequence of bases codes for different amino acids. The sequence of the amino acids in a protein determines its structure and function, and this in turn determines an organism's characteristics. And so we say overall that DNA controls inherited characteristics in an organism, as the DNA is passed from parent to offspring. Now, every three bases in the DNA base sequence codes for one amino acid. And using the bases A, T, G, and C, that there are 64 possible three base combinations using these four bases. Uh, but you have to remember, of course, that when mRNA is transcribed from DNA, thymine is replaced with uracil. And if there are 20 amino acids in total, then each amino acid is coded for by at least one of these triplet base sequences. And each three base sequence on the mRNA strand is called a codon. So each codon codes for a particular amino acid. So this codon wheel here uh, basically represents all those different possible codons for all the different amino acids. So if we have a look at an example, the mRNA codon UCU would code for the amino acid serine. And so would UCC, UCA and UCG. So we know that messenger RNA carries a copy of the genetic code uh, to the ribosomes for protein synthesis. So, what are the requirements of transcription? So first we have our DNA template, which are the gene which is to be transcribed. We need the enzyme responsible, which is RNA polymerase. We need a supply of free RNA nucleotides, which will be adenine, uracil, guanine and cytosine. And once again, a supply of ATP to provide the chemical energy to stitch those nucleotides together in that growing RNA strand. So here we have our double DNA strand, which is the gene which is going to be transcribed. It has uh, at the beginning of the gene a promoter region where the RNA polymerase will attach. And at the other end of the gene, a what's called a terminator region, uh, where the RNA polymerase knows to stop transcription. So RNA polymerase comes along and attaches itself to the promoter region where it's about to begin transcription. The hydrogen bonds in the, uh, between the bases 
of the DNA helix uh, begin to weaken and the double helix opens up and RNA polymerase begins transcription and it works its way along the gene adding nucleotides to the three prime end of the growing mRNA strand and this strand of mRNA being produced is known as the primary mRNA transcript. Once the terminator region is reached the RNA polymerase uh, is released and we have a completed primary transcript of mRNA. Now before that mRNA can be used in translation it needs to be modified. Now there are non-protein coding regions of genes and these are called introns. But the protein coding regions themselves are called exons. Now the idea is to get rid of the introns and keeping the exons. And that's where the process of splicing comes into play. So let's say we have a primary transcript here, uh, just come from transcription from RNA polymerase. Uh, the blue parts are the introns, the non-protein coding regions, and the yellow parts are the exons, the protein coding regions, and they are labeled 1, 2, and 3. After the primary mRNA transcript is produced, these introns are removed and the exons are spliced together. This produces what's called a modified mRNA transcript. This modified transcript then goes on to the process of translation into proteins, which we will look at next time. Many thanks for watching.